Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and today we're gonna to be looking at Capture One for the iPad. Now, for those who don't know, Capture One is a photo editing app in the vein of something like Adobe Lightroom. And it's getting a lot of buzz. I feel like it's gaining momentum over the last couple of years. I feel like I keep hearing more and more about it. And one of the reasons I personally haven't gotten into it just to really give it a fair shake myself is because it only runs on the desktop, so only Mac OS and Windows. And I personally like to edit my photos on this. I really like editing photos on the iPad because I can, it just has a great screen. I like doing it with touch. I like using the Apple Pencil for it. And I wasn't able to do that with Capture One, so it wasn't that appealing to me as an overall package the way Lightroom is, which whether you like it or not, is basically the same interface across the Mac iPad and even the iPhone. So when Capture One recently announced that they were releasing an iPad app, I was interested immediately. So I signed up, I just got into the beta. I don't know if they're accepting new people into the beta right now, so hopefully this video will be helpful if you aren't able to get into it. Um, but yeah, uh, this is not a review. I wanna say that really clearly up front. This is not a review of the app. This is just my first impressions from using it for about an hour or so today. This is more to help you see what the app's gonna do before release. Uh, rather than give my final opinions on it because it's a beta. I've only been using it an hour. Don't think of this as a review. But with that out of the way, let's jump into the screen share. Okay, so here is Capture One on the iPad, and you can see my library pulled up here. Uh, two things that I just want to note up front. Number one, I did have to sign into my Capture One account, so I think you're going to have to have an active, just normal Capture One license to use this. Um, and number two is there's no way, as far as I can tell, to sync my catalog from my Mac over to the iPad. So these have to be manually imported on each device. So over here in the import options, I see photos and I see files. If I hit photos, it brings up the photo picker where I can just pick a photo from my uh, photo library and import that. Uh, the files is going to be the same thing. It's going to bring up the file picker and I'll just be able to pick files on my iPad. Or if I have an SD card plugged in via the SD card reader, uh, that's going to show up under files as well. And I'll be able to pull them in directly from the SD card. So these three photos I pulled in are just directly from my SD card. So let's jump in to select uh, one of these photos. And the basic layout of the app is you have the film strip at the bottom, so that's gonna be familiar to a lot of people. Um, up in the top left, you have the ability to go back as well as the ability to set some filters or to change the order of the film strip. Uh, so it's just by capture date, but I could change uh, by any of those. Uh, at the top right, you have your like reset, which is this kind of full uh, circle arrow. Uh, you have undo, redo, you can select multiple photos, you can share it, you can trash it. And then there's settings for uh, switching the tools around, turning the histogram on or off, and then some very basic settings. There's basically no settings, so I'm not even gonna go in there um, right now, but yeah, there's not much to change. Uh, at the bottom right, you have the ability to copy or paste uh, adjustments. You can hide the film strip if you'd like. And over here on the far left, you have the controls. So these are the things you're changing. So you can see the first one is selected and this is the star rating. So I can set it five stars, three stars, whatever. Um, I'm just gonna make it no stars here. Um, so you can do that if you wanna kind of go through them and kind of set the star rating. Uh, you have some presets here in the first one. So these are just your normal kind of presets and you can apply multiple of them if you'd like uh, and then undo those and everything. Um, so you can kind of just go through these. I don't know how I import my own. I would assume that I'd be able to import my own presets, but I haven't been able to find a way to do this. Uh, but they do have some that are kind of built in and you can play around with. So those are some presets available here. Next up is the cropping tool. Uh, so you can just do kind of drag with your finger and you can crop. I actually have it locked to a square right now. So if I go here, you can see it's square. I can keep it to the original or I can freeform rotate it. If I go to freeform, then I can make it whatever I'd like. Uh, I actually kind of like the framing of this one, but maybe I have too much at the top. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, if I want to rotate it, this is where we get into uh, kind of how all the controls work. I hold my thumb here and then I can drag up and down to rotate the photo. And once I'm happy with whatever the rotation is, I'm just done. So I'll tap the icon on the left again, and there we go. Now we get into the normal adjustments, right? So if I click on this one or this one, these are gonna be kind of your normal adjustment tools you're used to in a photo editor. And so I can just toggle it to black and white and there's a ton of controls here. I'll untoggle that uh, and then I can go into white balance. I can change the, um, the white balance here. I can change the tint. So to whatever I want, uh, there is an eyedrop picker so I can pick a gray spot on the photo. All that kind of works. If I go to exposure, all my tools are here. And again, kind of you just tap the one on the left with your left thumb and with your right thumb, you kind of tweak, you just slide up and down on this spinner 
to get things how you want it to be. So um, the contrast we'll do kind of there. What I really want to do is raise the shadows. So there's this HDR section, tap on shadows, and I'm going to raise the shadows. And there we go. We're starting to see his eyes come out a little bit. Um, the whites, maybe I'll bring those down a smidge. And then the highlights I can actually bring up maybe. I'm, I'm really just making random changes. They're pretty subtle actually right here. I feel like I'm not making a huge difference, but yeah. So clarity is here, dehaze, color editor. Um, so I can change individual colors um, or I can change all of them. Um, again, the hue, the saturation, and uh, yeah, it's just kind of these. These are they're basically the controls you would expect, but they're not sliders like they are in the desktop or they are in Lightroom. You're kind of using this drag up and down. Um, I will also say there are no keyboard shortcuts. So as far as I can tell, there's no keyboard shortcuts. You can't control this with your keyboard. You can use the magic keyboard with a trackpad and everything, but this is really designed around touch and really even more around using your fingers, using your thumbs than using like the Apple pencil. So yeah, um, here's vignetting. And then I don't know why it's broken into a se separate section, but here we have sharpening, noise reduction, film grain, and more. Moire? I don't know how to say that exactly. Um, but yeah, so we can add like, if we zoom in, uh, we can go ahead and add some film grain. It's pretty darn subtle, honestly. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know if this is more, if this is gonna be as good quality as the desktop there, you can definitely see it there when you go to 100. But yeah, so most of the editing tools are here. It, it, the interface is a little weird. I can definitely see they're doing like a touch first interface and maybe once I get into it, it'll feel really natural. But I really, I was kind of hoping this would be the desktop interface more directly kind of replicated here. There's no customization options right now. For example, there's no way for me to like choose the ones that I like the most and drag them to the top. Um, it's all kind of just whatever it is, is what it is. Um, and maybe that's fine, but yeah, it's not totally perfect. Um, so if I wanted to copy these settings, I would just hit this button down here. My adjustments have been copied. I can switch over to this picture and paste them here, right? So that all works uh, pretty nicely. So yeah, that's kind of all it does. Uh, there's no way, again, for me to uh, do anything with these like with syncing them to my Mac or anything, basically once I'm done, I just hit the share button and then I can choose to share, I can change the name, uh, I can choose the format of JPEG or I can edit the raw or export the raw with the edits. I guess their assumption is I will just export this and then import that on my Mac. It's not ideal. Um, and then I can choose the resolution, the quality, it gives me an estimation for the file size um, and I can put a watermark on there if I like. So yeah, that's Capture One for the iPad. Um, again, it's maybe not exactly what you were expecting. It wasn't quite what I was expecting. And I'll see what it's like to use it more and more. But in my first impressions, I do feel it's slower than Lightroom. It's slower than the more traditional controls that we're used to on the desktop or on Lightroom on the iPad. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see how I kind of do with it with a little bit more time. But yeah, hopefully this was helpful. If it was, hit the like button and I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.